Hey there everybody, this is going to be a, a, a demonstration of basic polygonal modeling techniques uh, to create a simple hammer uh, type of object. Um, we're going to use this as kind of a reference for what it is that we're going to be doing uh, in the future. And so um, these kind of things will be helpful for setting up your scene and getting a feel for some of the different uh, modeling tools that are available to you. Now one of the things we want to do right off the bat is start a project and create our own project folder. So we go up to file I'm going to go down to project window and we're going to be creating a new project and so um, first I want to go here click on the new button and this is going to be called poly hammer uh, and so I'm going to actually make sure that part is not on there and then I want to make sure that it's going into the proper folder so currently I want to direct this to my projects folder in in uh, on my server graphics server so in my projects folder here I'm going to add this new uh, this new folder going to be called polyhammer so I have that folder selected I'm going to select that so it's going to be inside of the projects folder it's called polyhammer and I'm going to say accept and for now I'm going to create my first saved scene and this is going to be called polyhammer dash setup Okay, and then I'm going to put .mb on there. Um, and actually I'm going to put 1.1 so I have a way to increment things. And so this is basically going to be my setup before I start modeling anything. I'm going to get things set up in my scene. So here I have Polyhammer setup 1.1. Now what I want to do is I want to take that image uh, that I just had up here of this hammer and I'm going to save it as an image. So I'm going to say save image as and it's pretty big so but I'm going to, I'm going to use it anyway. Um, I'm going to go to my folder and go into my projects folder and I'll see my poly hammer here and I'm going to save it in my source images folder and I'm going to call this hammer ref and it's a JPEG image. I'm going to say save so that is now in that folder which I could go and see if I went to my directory and I went into my projects folder and if I bring it up here's my poly hammer here is my source images folder and here is the hammer image that I want to work with it's actually quite big but it's okay for now and scenes there's my scene well everything is organized for me now one of the things I want to do is I want to, I want to model things in a specific orthographic camera. I want to work orthographically so I'm going to be using my four view here and I'm going to work with the front and the side camera. Since this reference image is of that actual hammer from the side I'm going to load this into my side camera. And here's one way you can do this. I'm going to go up to view, select my camera Oh, I actually I don't even have to do that. I'm just going to say view and say uh, image plane and say import image and what's going to happen is going to say well what do you want to import and I'm, because it's directed into my source images folder in my projects folder I can go straight to that and open it up and what you're going to see is is that it puts a nice image of a hammer right there in my workspace. Now I can also see it in other views as well and that's something I can change right away because I don't necessarily want it to be right here but this does this will give you a little bit of a sense of some of the things that you can do with this reference. Now if I had a front view, a side view, a top view I could load all of those into these different cameras in the exact same way that I just did this. So one of the things I can do is when I'm modeling something I want to get things oriented the best way that I can. See how this middle line here isn't quite going down the middle of the shaft of the hammer. Although it's not too bad, it's not quite perfect. And I can tweak those things all day long if I wanted to. And some of the ways you can do that is to select your hammer or to select your camera, go into the attribute editor, 
and we can go down to this area called uh, uh, extra attributes. Uh, well, no, 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 that's not it. Um, let me see, where is it? So here I am looking at my camera here. I'm selecting my camera, and what I need to do is look at the actual node for the image plane. So I have a, I'm going to have an image plane. So I'm going to go to Windows, Hypergraph, and the image or the camera itself has input information. So I'm going to click on this uh, input output connections, and I can see the image plane uh, right here. And so I'm going to go down to the image plane settings and I can go here to the placement extras and I can move things around a little bit. And so if I say move the center of the image, say a few units in one direction or another, I want to move it a few units in negative x. So I could actually put a value like 2 or something here. Uh, well, I'm sorry, that's in X. I want to move it in Z. And you can see that by putting a value of negative 2, it pushes the image farther away. So I always go 10, and I'm going to move these over a little bit. You'll notice that in your orthographic view, you can't really tell. Uh, but you can tell if it's in front of or behind the grid. So if I went 10 in front of the grid, notice that the grid is no longer in front of the image. I push it back and I'm going to push it over a little bit so that the middle of the handle is more in the middle of here. So I'm going to push it in positive Z a little bit. Maybe uh, 1 would be a full unit, so maybe uh, 0.3. I'm going to push it over. That's too many. So maybe like 0.1. There we go. So now this line goes kind of down, down the grid. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to have to change my uh, my grid options back to default because this is a little too uh, a little too hard to see. All right. So here's my image plane information. And one of the things that I can do as well is that when I have my image plane node here selected, I can adjust the alpha gain and actually control the transparency of that hammer. So here I am with my setup, and I'm going to save this scene as is right now, and I'm going to make a new scene. And I'm going to say Save Scene As. And I'm going to say Poly Hammer. I'm going to say Basic Geometry. And then I'm going to call this uh, 1.2. I'm going to say Save As, Save. And this is where I need to begin my actual project. Now one of the things I want to do is, when you begin working with an object like this, you're going to be thinking of and planning out what is the simplest form I can get by with in order to get this shape. And what we're going to do is we're going to begin with a simple cube. And I'm going to send, begin with a simple cube basically here like at the head of the hammer. This cube is going to have the fewest divisions as possible. And as I model, I may make mistakes, and I may have to fix those mistakes. But what I want to do is just kind of do the best I can a little bit at a time. I'm not going to try to have a great deal of amount of geometry or anything like that. One thing I want to look at is that I have this part of the hammer here, the, the part that you hit things with, but then I have this claw in the back. And this claw is actually two separate pieces, and it looks like it comes off from right there. So without a better reference, and I'm assuming you know what a basic hammer looks like, we're going to get the basic shape of this, but then I'm going to have to do what's called an extrusion out the back, with, which results in two separate pieces, whereas the front is going to be one. And another thing is, this is round, and this is more square. So we kind of have round shapes and square shapes and then extruded long curved shapes and then we have the whole neck and all of that. But I'm just going to focus on this right now. And so in this particular case I'm going to be working in several different views. One, notice that I'll be working in my 
perspective view so I can kind of see things, but I'm also going to be working in my side view as well. So the first thing I need to do is go to create, go to polygon primitives, and go to my cube options box and hit reset settings. I'm going to say create, and it's going to create that and close it. And I'm working in my orthographic views here, and I'm going to move this up to about this point. Now I'm going to do something else here. I am going to go into my shading options and I'm going to go to x-ray and that's going to allow me to make simple adjustments in on and to this uh, to this object. One of the things I find easy uh, some quick things you can do is just scale things down the way you want just by doing uh, universal scales and that sort of thing or scales in just Y or X or Z but I can also move things and I just want to basically get some basic alignment here I'm not worried too much about details but basically I want this to extrude this way and up and this to extrude this way out and down and then the neck to come down but one of the things I'm going to need right off the bat is a division that allows me to split my faces into smaller and smaller parts and the tool that we use to do that is uh, there's a couple that you can work with and one of the things we can do is just simply go to our polycube uh, his the polycube history here and add a subdivisions along its uh, depth well if, if I go along the depth it'll be this way if I go along uh, its depth it'll be this way if I want to go along the X so what I want to do is um, since I've already modified it it's going to change some things so what I can do is I'm going to go back to the very very core shape here and I'm going to go in my width here and I'm going to split that just here right at the very beginning now if I go into component mode and I can go in and see different vertices Notice that I can choose a single vertex and manipulate that, or I can change, I can select a whole row. So a lot of the times you got to be careful when you're working in side views and that you're grabbing an entire row of vertices and not just one or two by mistake. Like this looks like I might have the whole row, but I may actually be just moving one single vertex, and I don't. I want to be careful throughout this whole process of doing something like that. All right, so from here, I want to do a couple things. So I'm going to basically just be looking at my basic components. And if I want to arrange them in specific ways, I can, maybe just to get a basic shape like this. Maybe I can grab these here and get a basic shape like that. This is a, a, a decent starting point. Now, if I look at it from the side, I have this and I have that. Okay, from this point, I want to do what's called an extrusion, where I'm going to pull out the faces that are going to go on this part of the hammer. And what I'm going to do is a series of extrusions out and down and up. So it's going to go out and down, out and down, up and down, kind of like a stair step. And I want it to be fairly smooth. You can do this in a variety of different ways. Uh, but for this part, I want to do this. I'm going to go into component mode. I'm going to right click and say face. Now it shows me the faces of this hammer. I'm going to make sure that I'm on the right side here. I can't tell necessarily from this direction that those are highlighted, but they are. And what I want to do is I want to pull these out. Now, Maya makes some really nice tools for us. Um, we can do this in a variety of ways. I could choose these faces here and I can go up to my polygonal menu and I can go to uh, edit mesh and since I'm working with faces I can go here and say extrude and go to the options box and say edit reset and now I can do that here but there's one thing I've got to look at because I'm working with duplicate faces or adjacent faces I have an option to pull them out together meaning they'll be stuck at the same edge, they'll share an edge, or separately, meaning that they will not share an edge, they'll have their own individual sides and be independent pieces, like this claw back here. Now, before I actually do this command, 
I want to go up to Edit Mesh and say uh, I want to check whether I want to keep the faces together or if I want to keep them, uh, keep them apart. And so doing that is something that you have to do before so it used to be the keep faces together option used to be up here in the edit mesh under faces before you could ex uh, extrude you had a checkbox well they've moved that now to the windows option where we go to windows settings and preferences preferences and it's in the modeling uh, modeling option and then you have to check keep faces together and that will always keep your faces together if it's unchecked it will be uh, so that there'll be separate faces. Now, one of the things that Maya has is called a modeling toolkit, and it's up here in our options window here, and it will be a part of our channel box. And so when we turn this on, um, we have the ability to choose different components, like I want to be working with my faces. I'm gonna select, uh, or those are edges, and these will be faces. So I wanna bring up my faces. And the option thing that I the thing that I want to do is select the faces I want to work with and go down to what's called extrude. And when I go down to the extrude options, I have the ability to keep faces together, which is automatically set for me. And now I want to be able to pull out a specific range of uh, options. So I'm going to be looking here in this direction. I can pull this out and I have offset attributes that I can use to bring things down or up and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring things down a little bit and when I want to repeat that I'm going to hit G and I can pull it I can pull out another uh, another bit of I'm going to go to my offset I'm going to bring that up I'm going to extrude again. To repeat that process, I'm going to hit the Z. Uh, Z. It's going to pull that out and repeat the exact step that I just did. I'm going to go to my select my offset over here, pull this a little bit wider. Now, I'm going to keep going, repeat that, and I'm going to Start to flatten that out a little bit. And once I'm finished with that, I'm going to turn that off. And I can go back then and I can begin to basically shape this by moving all these vertices around. So I'm going to just kind of do a bulk kind of shape here. I might you move these back a little bit. And I might move these up by using my believe in a scale tool, I can scale up a little, or maybe I'll leave it in there, grab these, scale up a little. I'm going to go back into my, turn back, turn my modeling toolkit back on, go into my uh, faces, grab this, and grab this again, and do another extrude. And I'm going to pull that out some more, and I'm going to pull that out a little bit more like so. Go here, and then I'm going to hit G again. It's going to duplicate that, but I'm going to, I'm going to pull this back, and I'm going to scale it down, and I'm going to make that about like so. And I'm going to call that side done uh, for the basics. So if I was to go here and look at this in this realm, I could say, okay, that looks pretty good. And this might be too big, and I might end up shrinking this down and use some other tools to do that. But for the most part, I'm getting the basic shape that I want. I'm following those outlines. Now, it's going to be a little bit different on this side. Um, this side is going to require me to do something a little bit, uh, a little bit different. So I'm going to approach this in a little bit different way. Now, if I'm interested in extruding something, 
Oops, what I don't want to do is what I just did and hit the button too soon because it's uh, it might give me a result that I don't want. That's actually going to be just fine. I'm going to hit I'm going to hit enter and I'm okay with that. I'm going to go around here now and choose my options for my faces and choose these two faces. Now something I need to do that's a little bit different is that I'm going to scale these down in position. So if I go into my extrusion, notice how it pulls these down. And I'm going to just narrow those down a little bit more. I'm going to narrow them down. And I'm going to go into my components. And I'm going to grab these. Or I might grab the edges if I can grab this whole ring. Grab that one, double click it grab that and grab that and I'm gonna scale them out a little bit notice that I'm constantly working in lots of different ways now this area here should be pretty much flat and so I want to make sure that I'm kind of working within this plane um, and one of the things that I want to see is actually I just noticed that it doesn't start to split until about here. So I'm actually just going to ahead pull this out a little bit. Uh, and so I'm going to use my scale tool to lift the, pull that up. And I'm actually going to go into my components and grab these and move them down. So I'm going to just manipulate all this stuff before I actually start doing too much. So I'm manipulating all of these points all the time. Constantly tweaking things, constantly trying to decide uh, you know, do I like the way that looks? Is that in the right spot? All in an effort to try to get the shape the way that I want it. All right. Now, if I'm happy with this, I'm going to go back to my components. And I'm going to go here and here. And I'm going to go to my extrusion tool. And I'm going to say, do not keep faces together. <clears throat> And when I do that, I want to be able to pull out in the local Z some shapes. Now, I don't like the way that looks, so I'm going to undo, back up, back up, back up. I don't want those to collapse. And so I'm going to do something else. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to turn it, uh, I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to go up to my Edit Mesh tool, and I'm going to go down to Faces, and I'm going to go to Extrude. I'm going to go to my Options box, say Edit, Reset Settings. I'm going to say Extrude. Now, when I do this, this is a different way, and it gives you a, a little bit different way to do this. First of all, I want you to notice something that when I hit extrude, the, uh, the actual command has already been done. And see these little squares up here? This is something you can't see if you don't have the square, the faces illuminated as centers. These are basically edges that have been collapsed. Uh, those are faces that are basically one edge thick, and they're right on top of one another, which is not actually a good thing. But it's nice that you can actually see that. Now, I'm going to pull this down, and I'm going to pull this uh, together a little bit because this is where I want to see kind of what, what's going on. Actually, I'm going to undo that because one thing I want to do, and this is common, is that before I do something, I need to make a change of my settings. So remember, put my Windows, Windows, Settings and Preferences, Preferences, under Modeling, I have to go and uncheck Keep Faces Together. So I'm going to say Save. And now when I go here, hopefully, if I choose these two faces and I extrude them, I'm going to go to Edit Mesh, under the Face category, Extrude, and if I scale them equally, you'll notice that they have become separate. And if I scale up in Y, I'm applying the same, uh, the same uh, deformation or, or tool 
to each face at once. So what I want to do is uh, I've got to separate these claws, this claw as it comes out. Okay. And so right now, before I go too far, I'm going to grab the vertices, all of these vertices in a row. And I'm going to move them a little bit further out, like so. And this, like I say, this is going to just take some, some tweaking. And this is totally normal on how you might make some make these changes. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to grab these guys. And they're a little too narrow, so I'm going to pull them out a little bit. And I'm going to scale them up a little bit because they need to be more like this. So sometimes it's easier just to grab these parts and move them down like so. And I'll move these whole, this whole thing back until I get it the way that I like it. And so once you get familiar with working with your models, I want you just to understand that you're just moving points around, you know, and you are in control of everything that you're doing. And, but you've got to kind of understand what you can work with. Now I have two separate faces, see that? And now I can grab this face and this face. And I can continue to extrude out. If I want to use my modeling toolkit, I can. I can go to extrude, <clears throat> and the offset values uh, are messed up. So I'm gonna, I've got to fix that. So those offset values are not, uh, we're not correct. And I'm going to scale them down. Sometimes these things, it's just easier to do it in other ways. So I'm gonna undo that. Sometimes, that can be a little bit of a difficulty. So what I would do is I would go to my extrusion and I'd have to reset the settings. If I reset settings, this is what I'm looking for. I want this to simply be, uh, these claws are simply going to come out just like this and I'm going to pull them out and pull them down a little bit. And I'll probably want to make them a little skinny because notice how they taper. So right now, right now, I'm not really tapering them because I'm looking kind of at both. So this claw here is actually tapering pretty nicely, like so. And I'm going to just grab these guys and make them taper. I'm going to follow this profile, and I'm going to move and continue to take these faces here and here and extrude them and pull them out and down and scale them. I'm going to move them down. I'm going to taper them. I'm going to go to my vertex and I'm going to just const just I'm going to do as few as I need to in order to get the job done. I'm going to grab these making sure I only have the ones that I want. I prefer to go here to my extrusion tool. And let me show you something that's really quite interesting and nice. When you have your extrusion tool up, you have a little index and indices, a cycling index that allows me to change the direction uh, of some of these things. You'll notice that Currently, you extrude towards the normal of the actual object. However, if you go to the cycling index, it'll actually change it so that you could extrude in the world space as well, which doesn't seem much different, but it's significantly different in certain times. Uh, in this particular case, I'm using the normals of this, and I'm going to use my side view again, and I'm going to go back, and I'm going to fix I'm going to fix this, bring it up. And if I wanted to, sometimes I can get by with taking fairly large extrusions, but I want to keep things fairly square. So jumping ahead like that isn't necessarily going to do me any good. Okay, so I've got a couple more extrusions that I'm going to do on my face. I'm going to go up and use my icon. I'm going to pull this out and pull this down, shrinking it down a little bit, following my profiles. And I want to make 
make sure I'm continuing to work everything. Go back to face. And I will tweak these things as I, as I, uh, when I officially say, okay, I reached my end here. This is where I'm going to end. And I'll scale it down a little bit, maybe thin it down, get a little skinnier, but I'll adjust these things later. All right. So there is the hammer and there's the claw. And that's a good place to stop on that. Okay. Now, once I'm done with that, I can simply go down here to this base, select these faces, extrude again, extrusion. I'm going to extrude, I'm going to do a uniform extrude. Oh, see, now there's a great example of these settings that you've got to reset. So now that I want the faces to be together, I have to go back to my Windows setting. Actually, I can go to my I turn on my modeling toolkit, go down to extrude and reset settings and say keep faces together. And then I can grab these two on this one and this one and this one. Oh, got it. Sorry, deselect this one and this one. And it, because I see these little points here, that means that it did it already performed a extrusion option on them. So I'm going to scale this down a little bit scale it uniformly, go back up. This is going to give me a little bit of that taper that I'm looking for. And I'm going to hit G again to repeat that and G again. And what I can do then, I can simply go back and I can, I can then shape my hammer um, all along the way. And so I'm going to continue to extrude, extrude this down a little bit, and I don't need a tremendous amount of points or uh, faces because I'm going to go back and I'm going to put in some of the points that I want. So for now, I'm going to grab my extrusion tool and I'm going to go down a little bit. Say to this point, I'm going to hit G again. I'm going to pull it down a little bit. G again means repeat, and then I'm going to go here. And anytime there's a major change in shape. I'm going to pull that out, hit G again, I'm going to pull it out again. And I might put it one there and I'll put one here, here, and here, which I pull that out a little. Oops, pull that down. And then what's nice is I can just go back, simply go back and grab my vertices and move them and get the get the things back into the way that I what is pleasing to me. So if I want this to go out, I'll just go out a little bit with it. These all of these might need to go out a little bit. And I might move them up. So that the idea is, you know, keep it simple and uh, I'll give it a little taper there. And for the most part, you can get yourself a pretty good look of a hammer by using these polygonal tools. And so for now, that's a place where we're going to stop, and then we'll continue on after a minute. So save your scene here, and then we're going to add what's called, I'm going to add more tension later. Basic geometry and then I'm going to say instead add tension. And this is going to be version 1.3 and save as. Alright, now that we have this uh, hammer modeled, um, there's a few things that we can do to make some adjustments. Now, uh, one of the things that I always like to do is that if I'm going to move something, if I'm going to be moving uh, components, I always want to make sure I am selecting an entire series of components like this. Not just grabbing one, 
one a lot of times people think they'll just they can click on and grab one or thinking they're going to get a whole row uh, and they only get one because it's kind of hard to tell so if I was to move that one point I would get a distortion in my be in my out of my components because I am pulling that let me turn off my shading x-ray because I'm pulling that piece of material I'm stretching it out and making it uh, just I'm distorting the, 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 the nature or the shape of the object but when I do make modifications like I will want to tweak things meaning I will want to make sure I have the uh, the contour of my model uh, as clean as I can so I'm like for instance I'm following this edge here let me go back to shading x-ray uh, oops shading x-ray I guess I had it on so I'm following and lining up my edges so that they follow the the actual shape of the model now once I'm happy with that uh, I'm gonna I'll move on to the next stage but I want to one thing about a hammer is that it kind of tapers out a little bit along these edges they might come down a little bit or they might be might it's wider here and it gets more narrow so I'm going to show you something that is handy uh, Maya has in it what's called a soft modification or not soft modification soft let me show you it's in your tools I'm gonna double click on one of my tools and I'm gonna pull down this bar here and we have what's called a soft selection tool and what this does I'm gonna, by reset resetting it here I've got uh, a different type of radius what this allows me to do is if I select a face so for instance if I select this face it will Notice how the color looks like heat. It's yellow here and it turns black. This is the range of influence that just selecting this one face has on the model. If I was to move that one face, it is distorting everything uh, that is illuminated here. It has some sort of influence. Now, you don't want that much influence. I, all I want to do is have uh, a little bit of influence on some of its nearest neighbors and you have some options here that are actually quite helpful and one is called volume one is surface so that means it will only affect the surface area instead of a volume where it affects these neighbors and I don't want it to affect the neighbor I just want it to affect uh, the faces that I'm going to choose so I'm going to choose both of these now I'm going to increase this up 0.9 and what I want to do is, is if I use my scale tool notice how uh, or if I use my move tool I'm going to do this I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to pull this over a little bit but I actually don't like the way that's looking I don't want that curve uh, so that tool is for this particular case it, I'm going to try to grab a little bit more of it because I don't like the curve I'm getting. Let me try a little bit farther out maybe a 2.2 and it goes up to that so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab that and see if I can move these. No I don't like I don't like the way that looks. So I'm going to try something else and that's a very normal thing to try. Uh, so I have to turn that off so I'm going to uncheck that. Now let me show you something else. If I go to my component mode, vertex, and I'm going to go to my top view, now watch what I can do here. I can grab an entire, these, this two row, these two rows right here, and I want to make sure that I only get those two rows, and I'm not getting something else by mistake. So for instance, I want to make sure I didn't accidentally grab all of these, and then I've got some of these down here and some of these up here. I don't want that. I just want, I hit undo, control Z, and I just want this region right here. And so I'm going to go back to my top view. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my scale tool and I'm going to scale in X. I'm going to just pull those out a little bit. I've given myself some space. Now I'm going to take just this single row right here. I'm going to make sure that that's the only thing I really have. 
and I'm going to use my rotation tool, my top view, and I'm going to rotate this ever so slightly, like so. I'm going to do the same thing. Now look, sometimes things get a little tricky and we can use a different type of selection and that's this lasso. So if I drag around here, I can use this lasso and I can grab just the ones that I want. And instead of trying to do a, oops, I'm gonna make sure I have only the ones that I actually want, and I do. I'm gonna go back here, and I'm gonna give that tweak ever so slightly. And I'm just eyeballing it. That way it gives me that taper feel that I, that I like, and I can move those in if I wanted to. If I wanted to do some more tweaking, I could, it looks like I might have some extras. Yeah, I have some extras. And how I knew that is because of the way this was moving. I could tell by the way it did not, didn't move quite right. Uh, it didn't move equally. If you grab something, if you grab more than one object, it wants to put the controller in the middle. So if I grab this one and I grab this, then it wants to put it in the middle. So if I thought I had these two grabbed, but I actually had that one and this one grabbed, then this isn't quite in the middle of these two points. So I know, even though I couldn't see it, so for instance, if I had this one and these two grabbed, even though I might not be able to see it, I know there's something wrong because this control isn't right between them. And so I could tweak that all the live long day until I'm happy with it. But for now, uh, that's fine for what I'm trying to do. Okay, so here is my hammer. It's very blocky and it's very... Uh, I'm hitting F8 to go back to this. And so I want to just briefly uh, mention is... Uh, some issues. There's something going on there. We'll talk about those things later. So anytime you see shading like this, it's not flat. You see this odd shade here. You know that there's a problem someplace and I'm not exactly sure what that might be and it might not be anything. It might be an overlap of something. It, it might be an overlap of points. And so it's probably because of this split, uh, I'm guessing. But for now, I'm going to just kind of look at this. So if I was to look, if I was to render this model, meaning if I was to try to photograph it and calculate light, it would look like this. Pretty, um, pretty blocky. Now one of the things in, mo in, 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 in making 3D models to remember is that um, these things become smooth and we'll want to smooth things out because we don't necessarily want this blocky feel uh, the way I have it right now. Now one of the things that you will want to understand is that as we begin to smooth things the model will become more and more round. So all these hard edges will become more rounded and this is going to end up looking more like a preschool toy uh, than a hammer. Uh, so the one way we can look at that is to use the keyboard buttons one, two, three. So currently we're on level one. If I hit number two on my keyboard, notice how that the model became smooth. This is a smooth preview. And notice how I have a bounding box and then a smoother version of that model inside of it. Well, that's really, in the end, when we start to smooth things out, that's really what we're going to end up, uh, what we're going to end up uh, seeing in the end. And so I noticed, I realized what my issue is, and the issue is I have an internal face, because I can see that when I smooth my model. And I can see that when my extrusion went out, my extrusion extruded two separate faces instead of one. And so that gave me a dual handle. And that's something that I'm going to have to go back and fix. So that's one thing when you're modeling that you're going to have to recognize that something like that's happening. Now a way I could have seen that is if I was working in my wireframe 
And if I went into my faces, I would see this inner, let me go into my object, and I would see this inner face right there. No, not right there. That's not it. Inside of here, let me fly in and try to find it. I can see it, but it's hard to it's hard to get to. Here it is, this one. Inside of there. And so I'm gonna have to fix that. Now there's a number of ways I can do it. The fastest way is probably just to go into the side view and get rid of all these mistakes starting right here going down. So all of this stuff holding shift, I'm gonna grab some more. All of these then would be uh, undesirable because of this one issue. And this might be something that happens to you. Uh, you model something and you won't realize, oh geez, I did, you know, it separated faces and it didn't, I wasn't aware of it. So I essentially have a, an issue here. This is how I'm going to fix it. I'm going to take my edge, this edge here, I double click it and I get that entire face. Now, if I was to look at that, it has a hole in it. It's a hole. And I'm going to say, uh, in this case, I'm going to go up to, uh, I'm going to go up to my meshes, and I want to find what's called fill hole, and it's usually under mesh, and it's right here, fill hole. And when I do that, it makes a new face there. Uh, so this face exists, and here it is. Now, one problem is we have some what's called poles, and that's a, an edge that follows through, but then it terminates. So I actually want this edge to follow through to here. And so what's nice is model, Maya has some nice modeling tools in our modeling toolkit. I'm going to bring up and I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to go down and I'm working on edges here. And I'm going to go down <coughs> to the multi cut. I'm sorry. Uh, mm, yeah, multi cut will work just fine. If I choose this vertices here and I click across here and I hit enter I'm just clicking on where these verte vertices are I know they're right there and I know they're right there so I didn't need to bring them up but I know they exist so now I have two faces now I'm going to turn that tool off I'm going to turn off that and I'm going to have to choose one thing I need to do is take this hold that and go into my mod my extrusion here and reset settings it's keeping my faces together so now when I extrude this if I pull that out I should have one solid face now if I smooth my model right now I don't have that separation so that's exactly what I want and uh, I'm gonna pull that I'm gonna pull that up a little bit that goes along and then I'm gonna repeat I'm gonna say extrude again I'm gonna hit or sorry I'm gonna hit uh, G, I'm going to extrude more, get my parts out, local, pull that out. I'm going to go back to my level 1. My uh, offset value is going to go down a little bit. I'm going to go back and I'll tweak that. I'm going to hit G to repeat process. And I'm going to hit offset, select offset, widen that a little bit. bring that down. I don't... I'm going to go to offset. I'm going to expand that a little. I'm going to hit G and it's going to duplicate that again. I'm going to go to offset. I'm going to expand that a little. Hit G again. And I'm going to go to local Z. I'm going to pull it out pretty much to the base here. Go to my offset bring it down, do one more, hit G to extrude, go to my local Z, and I'm not going to make it that high, and I'm going to bring it in, offset, I'm middle mousing, bring it down. Now if I round this out a little bit, and if I go to level 3, you'll see that I have a pretty good uh, shape there. If I don't like it, and I'll go back to my vertex, or I could go to edges, and then I can simply use my tools scaling down or in. If I go to my levels, I'm going to take this, I'm going to scale this down. I'm going to go here, that's not too bad. 
And I'm going to take these and move them up slightly. And if I'm happy with that, that's, that's fine. So now when I go to my, my level 2 smooth, I have what I was hoping for. And that's good. And that was the problem up here is that this these faces split and it, mess, mess, it messed up the, the normals and my shading calculations. So now my hammer looks the way that I expected. And I'm happy, very happy with that. Now I want to talk one more little bit about uh, something called tension. And we'll look more uh, about this in a little bit. But one quick example of this is making a polygonal cube. So here I have a polygonal cube. And by nature, you would think that a cube would hold its shape. Uh, and if I, and in all, act, you know, in general purposes, if I was to uh, render this out, meaning if I was just to calculate the actual look of this, object, it would look like a cube and, and I'd be very happy. However, if I wanted to start sh smoothing this, adding divisions, what I'm going to find out is that it wants to pull into a sphere. Now, one of the things that we have to do, and we have to do it very selectively and carefully, is add additional tension or support wires to hold the actual shape. And this is going to be a one of the reasons why our uh, our little hammer here wants to look like a, a preschool hammer, you know, a little soft, no sharp edges kind of thing. Well, when I go into level two by hitting two on my keyboard, I have what's called a bounding box around my uh, smooth previewed cube. Believe it or not, this is a cube. I need to add more tension to this to give it a harder edge. That means I'm going to add more edges in specific locations. And as I add the edges, you'll see the geometry actual surface respond to that and react to the amount of the tension to where I put the wires. And in order to do that, we're going to go up to what uh, a mesh. We're going to go to what's called insert edge loop tool. I'm going to go to my options box. I'm going to reset the tool. And what this does is, is I insert an edge loop. It's, I have to pick the, if I want an edge loop to go, to go this way around this, around it. Uh, so if I'm looking at this down the x-axis, if I want this to go uh, in the x-axis, I'm going to click on this edge here. And notice that I'm clicking on this horizontal edge, and it's, and it's drawing uh, an edge around from that point around. So as I, the closer I put this edge to the original, the first edge here, the tighter the edge will be pulled to that shape. So notice that it's pulled that surface closer. If I took my move tool and pulled that edge to one side or the other, the closer I get to that edge, the harder that edge is going to be. So for example, if I went this way and I went back to my tool, or if I hit uh, G and I put it over here, it's going to pull that edge closer and closer and closer to the corner. And the more edges or tension that I put around this edge, the harder that edge becomes. So notice that on the areas that I don't have the extra tension, I still, it still wants to be rounded and, and pulled into a, you know, a sphere. But over here, I have, I have now added that uh, extra tension to it. So if I was to stop at this point, and I actually subdivide, subdivided this object, meaning I just did a smooth on it. So currently, it looks like this. But the minute I began to smooth something and add more and more geometry to it, it's going to want to pull, pull more and more of that mesh to itself. So let me, let me finish adding some of my tension wires here. Since things are looking like so, I'm going to grab, I'm going to add some more tension. I'm going to go into level two so I can kind of see what I'm going to end up with. Well, actually, I want to see 
as an experiment for myself how this responds. So I add a smooth operation to this. Notice how it subdivides that and I'm going to hit G to do it again to add some more and more and I hit G again to divide it even further. Look at the shape that I get. And this is the actual shape I'm going to get because when I render this it will render and uh, it will render that shape out. So you can see it's got a nice beautiful curve here and a hard edge here. Another view of that. So I'm using tension to pull in geometry into the area that I want and then leaving it out in the areas that I don't. Notice that in this area I have much more uh, dense uh, geometry, much, many more faces, and on the back side I have fewer faces. So this is a more gradual kind of thing, and this is a more in-depth. So you can end up with some very beautiful geometry by doing that. So taking this same principle up here to my hammer, there are certain areas I'm going to level two that I might want to have feel a little harder. So I'm going to go to my same tool, Edit Mesh, Insert, or Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop Tool, or the icon is right here. And you'll learn to add it to your shelf right here, so I can actually just go quickly to it. I can add more tension in certain areas to get a little bit harder feel. So for instance, I would like to pull these a little closer to the ends. And I would like for them to kind of have a little bit harder edge, like so, and like so, like so, and like so. That gives me a little harder edge around there. And I'd like for this to have a little harder edge to it here and here. And so if I wanted to add, say, a groove or something like that to my hammer, I might want to have uh, a uh, some tension being held in this area while I go in and go to my edge here and grab, say, this one and scale it down a bit and to make it look like I have kind of that, that groove that you would see where the hammer and the metal kind of meet. So I might play with putting in a groove of some sort by just adjusting some of these, by adjusting some of these things. Down at the bottom of my hammer, I want the base to be a little bit more, uh, a little harder at the base here. Pull this in and pull this in right like that. And so for all practical purposes I'm going to end that level of refinement. And my final hammer model, once I was finished, I would go to a smooth and run a smooth process on it to smooth my model. I'm going to go back to a level one. And here I end up with a model. It's not too bad. It's not great. There are some issues that I might want to clean up. But for now, for a first kind of model, you get the idea. And oops, I need to photograph that a little better. And I might actually go and smooth it one more level just to see how smooth I get. There we go. So for the general idea, it doesn't have that preschool feel anymore. It doesn't feel like a safety toy or a little plastic thing. It has hard edges. It has edges that are dis uh, distinctly harder than some of the others. I have a little groove there in the neck of the hammer. That looks good right there. And my handle at the base isn't, isn't just uh, round and rubbery. It's got some edge to it. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that as my first model of extrusion and learning a little bit about tension and, uh, and following a, a reference uh, image. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was helpful. And um, there we go. Now it just takes a lot of practice and we're going to do some more in the future.